All right. Welcome, YouTubers. I appreciate you being here, and uh, uh, it's a great day again to be Indigenous. Uh, I feel so honored to be able to do this and provide the news and events uh, of the Native communities within the Inland Northwest. Uh, I'm going to be covering some of the top stories that we had. We've got uh, some clips from uh, the, the Coeur d'Alene powwow, their anniversary powwow down at the casino. Uh, we've also got some input about the Yakima settlement. It was really, it, it was a really uh, a big win for Indian country. Uh, and then also we're going to be tuning in and, and checking out uh, an update on the Midnight Uranium Mine on the Spokane Indian Reservation, something that they've been trying to clean up uh, for quite a while now. So, but before I get going though, I, I do want to say, you know, I really appreciate you checking out this channel. Be sure to like it and subscribe. Be sure to tell your friends all about it. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'm going to leave links to most of the stories, if not all the stories that I'm going to be doing here in the links below. So be sure to check it out. Um, one thing that was announced er earlier uh, was on June 22nd this year, the salmon ceremony up at Kettle Falls will be happening. Uh, they'll be uh, paddling for about five days uh, from various points in the Columbia and maybe even out on the Ponderay. I have to check that out. If you haven't been out there, I highly recommend it. You go check it out. A great spiritual experience, a great way to connect with some great people um, and, you know, to help revitalize that and bring back the culture. Uh, there was a film made uh, on uh, those events that by a, a great uh, Colville tribal filmmaker by the name of Derek Lemire uh, through War Pony Pictures. It's called United by Water. If you haven't seen that film yet, I highly recommend it. He did a great job with it. I'm really super excited for him. Um, it's, it's just very well done, tells a lot about the history, tells a lot about what was going on, and I'll leave a, a link to that in, in, in the comments below. On April 5th, Friday, April 5th, hundreds of people marched through the streets of downtown Billings, Montana for the, the MMIW, the murdering, mur to raise awareness to the murdered and missing indigenous women's movement. Um, it, it was a great thing. It was organized by the Native American Achievement Center, the Native American Development Corporation, and the Rocky Mountain Tribal Leadership Council. Now, they, they went on to march down to uh, Yellowstone County Courthouse, where they addressed issues like the stigma with, with the, the missing and murdered indigenous women. You know, this movement has gained so much um, momentum. I, I don't think they're going to be able to keep ignoring this. If you hadn't been able to check out uh, some of the statistics on it, um, there was a, a, a report done by uh, Abigail Echohawk. If you Google Abigail Echohawk, uh, and her uh, MMIW or murdered indigenous, uh, mur missing and murdered indigenous women uh, report. Uh, there's some just startling facts that, that are in that. I'll leave a link to that uh, again in the comments below. Um, but it's truly exciting. We had that many. They said over 400 people showed up on the streets of Billings, Montana. Can you believe that? Uh, pretty exciting. Uh, one of the things that happened is, is they had put forth a bill to try to get some funding uh, to specifically start uh, an investing uh, a, a program that would, would have an investigator to start looking into the uh, missing and murdered indigenous women in the state of Montana. And it was actually shot down um, unanimously, which I just can't even, with the indigenous population of Montana, all the tribes that are there, uh, the Blackfeet, the, the Salish Kootenai, um, the, the, you know, Rocky Boys out there, uh, all these uh, other smaller tribes too. But there are so many native peoples in Montana. It just shocked me that they, they voted it down. It's a huge issue, but uh, it's gaining more, more, more momentum. They're not going to be able to ignore this issue forever. So that's a great job, ladies, uh, on moving that, that piece forward um, or that, that, that movement forward. One thing I do want to mention, I'm going to be uh, trying to come up with, uh, 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 or I'm trying, I, I'm going to try, I can't say try to come up with, I'm going to try to keep up with all the news and events on a weekly basis. I'm going to try and put out a 10-minute update for you guys each and every week. Uh, covering all of these different stories. Again, on the, this last story, there'll, there'll be a, there was a great article in the, the Billings Gazette. And last time I saw it, it had been shared like 4,500 times, and it just came out. I mean, that just happened on Friday, and that's just the power of social media. So we need, we need to keep that momentum going. Uh, uh, up here in, in Spokane, Whitworth University, uh, student Haley Henderson, uh, filmmaker from the Blackfeet Nation, was featured in the Spokesman Review with her, her film, uh, Rising Voices, and it debuted uh, last month at the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival in, in Missoula, Montana. So uh, good job with that. Um, we're really looking for, for uh, more Native voices. You know, if we can get the youth out there, we can get them heard. The more and more films, Matt, just makes me more excited. I'm so happy to see that. Uh, I can't wait to see the film myself. Uh, the Kalispell Tribe, more economic development for them. They're opening on April 12th. And their grand opening up in Cusick at the new Kalispell Casino will be over the whole weekend. 
April 12th through the 14th. So there will be a link to their Facebook page. There's a nice little video. Gives you a tour through there so you can check it out uh, before you head up there. But congratulations to the Kalispell Tribe. We missed out, if you didn't hear this, uh, back in late February, back at at and in Portland, the Affiliated Tribes of Northwest Indians, um, they had the, the, the guys from Indian Country Today came down there and they told a great story of how Indian Country Today, just about a, a year ago, w was about to close their doors. But in that time, they've been able to turn it around and uh, last month, they said, was the first time they had a million users to, to their website. And that's just exciting. You know, they've been able to turn it around and they made an announcement there that they will be uh, producing a weekly television show uh, starting in September for Indian Country Today. So uh, in addition to that announcement that they made at at and just this last week, they, they announced that they uh, are going to be uh, opening a, a studio in, in Phoenix at the Walter Cronkite School at Arizona State University. Um, ooh, that's super exciting. They're going to be down there. ASU, uh, how exciting is that? What an awesome time to be an ind indigenous, you know, to be in this, uh, this era um, where social media and, and Native people are finally getting a voice. Uh, we can start uh, reckoning some of the things, some of the, the wrongdoings. We can start righting the wrongs. We can start uh, uniting, you know, the, the solidarity uh, within the Indi indigenous people of the Americas, you know, Turtle Island, uh, South America, Central America, North America, not just the Native peoples of this country, but First Nations of Canada, the indigenous people of Central America, all these uniting on the forefront of so many different issues, everything from big oil, uh, opioid epidemics. We've got uh, the missing and murdered indigenous women uh, of First Nations in Canada. That was a, that's really a big movement now too. So it's really super exciting. And I, I, I hope you guys will join us again uh, uh, for our next episode. We are going to talk with Coeur d'Alene Tribal Elder Jeannie Louie, and she's going to give us some insight on uh, the new, uh, the brand spanking new uh, youth center that they're, they, they're building down there on the Coeur d'Alene Res. And we're going to give you some highlights uh, from the 26th anniversary uh, Coeur d'Alene Casino Pow Wow uh, a couple weekends ago. We're also going to get some insight on the Yakima settlement from uh, Spokane tribal judge and, and professor of urban and regional planning at Eastern Washington University, uh, Margot Hill. She's going to let us know why that win at Yakima was so important. That that's something we got coming up. And then we're going. There was a meeting on the midnight uranium mine, something that they've been trying to reclaim since the, since it ceased operation in in the late 80s. They've been trying to get it cleaned up. It's an EPA Superfund cleanup site, uh, or actually they they declared it an EPA Superfund cleanup site over 10 years ago. And just a couple years ago, they started moving things along and hiring people to go out and uh, get things done out there. But we have an update. There was a meeting at, uh, at Eastern Washington University a, a couple weeks back, and we had people from the EPA there. Uh, we had the, uh, the Spokane Riverkeeper. We've got some commentary on that from him. And then we had the Shaw Society, uh, uh, Twella, and, and, uh, Twella Abrahamson Swan and Deb Abrahamson. They were out there. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to get that. Again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them uh, in the comments below. And don't, don't forget to check out the Facebook page. We got a lot of things going on the Facebook page. We got uh, everything from powwows that are coming up. There's, you know, that one that's coming up in there. It was announced earlier out on the Salish Kootenai uh, Reservation. I think it's going to be in May. But there's all sorts of things. There's going to be a horse relay out there. I'm going to have to get the the, um, the update on that. I'll, I'll get the flyer on and go over that real, real quick with you. But again, check out the Facebook page. We've got a Twitter page up and going. Uh, not a whole lot on it now, now, but stay tuned. All right. We're going to cut to some of those clips from this, this last weekend and from the EPA and so forth. So stick around. What do you guys got going out here? Well, we are celebrating the 26th anniversary of our casino, which started out as a bingo hall back in 1993, I believe it was. And from the casino, we went into uh, having a renovation. And then now, we also just finished a renovation. The, the casino area was moved around in uh, the last six months or so. And uh, they just had our soft grand opening for the travel members and employees yesterday and then so today which was great because it culminates right on the day of our anniversary so coming from just a small kind of you know impoverished tribe that we built this so that we could um, bring in more revenues have something that the people from here in the communities the visiting tribes can enjoy and um, uh, have a good time here, and so that's why we're celebrating. 
Excellent. Well, great reason to celebrate, man. I, I walked in there, and I was like, wow, this is fancy. Pretty nice. I was pretty happy to see that. You know, I remember coming out here when I was young, we uh, would come out for the powwows. And, you know, I'm, I'm not that young anymore, so it was a while. <laughs> but one of the things I wanted to ask you about, uh, it's pretty exciting for me, as I heard that you guys are, have a uh, wonderful youth center that's going up. Can you talk a little bit about that? The youth center that we have, um, at least what I know about it, uh, was uh, from the funding that we get from Mariman Health, which used to be the Benoa Medical Clinic, and the uh, income raised from that is what is putting into the new youth center, and it's, um, I believe the total cost of it is like $15 million. That's what's what we're going to do. I guess it's going to have... Um, football field, basketball field, indoor uh, recreation area, a small deli area outside. They're going to have uh, different event uh, areas. And we're hoping that even with that, if it gets a little bit larger, that we could maybe have our stick game or our powwows to be held there in that area. So. Yeah, I, rumor has it that's where Jalamps is going. <laughs> we hope so, yep. Uh, we're out here for uh, the Coeur d'Alene Pow Wow. This is the, the uh, uh, anniversary Pow Wow that they're celebrating. Um, can you do me a little uh, favor and uh, uh, introduce yourself? Tell me where you're from and what, uh, what you're dancing this year. Um, I'm Marissa McKisson. Um, I dance uh, old style jingle and contemporary jingle. This weekend I'm doing old style and I'm from Grand Coulee, Washington. Off the Coeur d'Alene, uh, Cabo Res. <laughs> all right, that's great. Uh, have you danced at all this year at all? Yes, I have. Where have you danced at? Um, Shelton, Washington, over on the coast, and then in Port Hall, Idaho. And uh, uh, where are you headed next? Um, I think Missoula, Montana for KIO. And and how? when is that? Um, April 19th and 20th, or University of Idaho, Pow Wow, which is uh, April uh, 6th and 7th. So uh, the jingle is one of the most uh, competitive uh, categories. That's why I stopped you. Uh, you know, when I when I look at the, the views on YouTube, you look at how many are out there, thousands and thousands and thousands uh, compared to some of the other categories. So it's really competitive. What's what's the competition like this year? Um, this year, I feel, I don't know. I'm just trying to branch out more. Um, I don't know, here for fun. <laughs>and it was Washington State Department of Licensing uh, versus Cougar Den. Cougar Den is a uh, tribally owned uh, fuel transportation operation uh, with membership from the Yakima Nation. Um, in that case, uh, the United States Supreme Court in a split decision, 5-4 uh, decision actually, uh, ruled in favor of the Yakima Nation. It was a great win for Indian Country, um, although it wasn't uh, majority of the justices, we are very pleased that it was a 5-4 decision affirming the lower court's decision um, to allow the Yakimas to transport fuel without taxation. All right, and why did they do that? So the decision was based on an 1855 treaty. In the 1855 treaty, um, there were provisions to hunt and fish and usual and a custom uh, locations in their in the Yakima Nation ceded ter territory, um, but a provision um, very specific to the Yakima Nation was their right to travel. In 1855, the Yakima Nation was very um, knowledgeable about their needs, and they negotiated with the uh, uh, governor of the, of the territory at that time, who was Isaac Stevens, and they specifically negotiated for mobility. Um, they understood that their economy was based on traveling and that included transporting fish and goods. They traveled clear to the Montanas and Wyoming to hunt buffalo, um, as well as their, because of their central location, they traveled to the coast um, for shellfish to, to trade um, the, the salmon that they pulled out of the river there at the Yakima Nation. All right. So you mentioned that this uh, came down to a five to four vote. Okay, there was a deciding vote then. 
Can you talk a little bit about who made that decision? Um, so it, it was very surprising. Uh, uh, Justice Breyer, of course, uh, um, opin- opined the decision. He, he wrote the opinion. Um, and for the tribes, it was very um, nice to see that Gorsuch um, actually joined uh, the majority and decided for the tribe. Uh, Gorsuch is a, a very conservative justice, and so we were pleased to see him ruling in favor of the tribe. All right, so uh, a, a big win for the Yakama Nation. Um, can you tell us uh, what, why is that significant to, to Indian country? So it's important for Indian country for a couple of reasons. One is that the United States, States Supreme Court is really uh, following their canons of construction, and they're reading the law in a light that's most favor- favorable to the tribes. And that's what they're supposed to do. And that's what uh, the Supreme Court judges, and that's what we teach in federal Indian law. That the that they it is both the tribes were at such a disadvantage that they are supposed to uh, read the law in a light most favorable to the tribes. Um, second, it's really important um, because there are other tribes that are similarly situated, um, namely the Nest Person Idaho and the Salish uh, Kootenai out of Montana, also have uh, provisions in their treaties that um, secure their right to travel, um, their right to mobility. Um, so this may, in fact, be um, something that can be read in uh, those particular tribes' favor as well. Yeah, uh, well, we're out here to really uh, support the voices of uh, tribal activists and tribal community members alike who are impacted communities by the Midnight Mine. Midnight Mine is, uh, was operated in the 20th century for many years and polluted surrounding lands and waters uh, and affected those communities uh, that live on and near the mine uh, profoundly. So we're here to really uh, educate the public up here in urban Spokane and bring people out tonight to uh, highlight the issues and really um, engage people so that the EPA uh, stands strong on their cleanup limits and we get a mine that has been cleaned up uh, to the proper levels um, so that future generations aren't sickened and our river stays clean and healthy in future generations. Really what happened, uh, you know, people uh, like Deb Abrahamson uh, have been working on this issue for years and years. Uh, and I've been Spokane Riverkeeper here for four years and right now, uh, Deb and Toila Abrahamson came to us and said, hey, you know, we're really at a, at a point that's pretty critical because Newmont Mine is asking for uh, lax, you know, to loosen the cleanup standard in this cleanup phase of the mine. And so we said, yeah, we would like to elevate this issue and support your voices and support your efforts, your long-standing efforts at bringing attention to this issue. Uh, And so we uh, got involved and have been tracking this issue and um, trying to, like I said, support those efforts of tribal activists who are engaging the community and the EPA and others. To my knowledge, there has not been any comprehensive public health study done of folks that have been sickened by uh, sickened by the uranium and some of the other m- metals that are have been exposed by mining, but there is a lot of anecdotal evidence that cancer rates are very high, and uh, <clears throat> that uranium can even get down through Blue Creek into the Spokane River, and so we're very concerned that um, you know th- that if these standards are loosened, uh, that that particular mine site be, continues to be a problem for the community <laughs> for years. Well, I think, I think now they're in this, you know, reclamation phase where, they're, where Newmont is actually cleaning this mine up uh, under the terms of the record uh, decision. And, um, and, and so one of the things that's changed now is Newmont has agitated to change the numbers you know, kind of change that cleanup standard. And so we're here tonight to kind of find out more about that. And frankly, I'm not an expert on that. 
Um, and I'm looking forward to learning more about that too, because I think that's the, th the thing that's changed right now is that cleanup standard and are we going to actually hold them to the original standard. My own take on that is that the Spokane tribe were the first river keepers and they continue to be river keepers to this day. If you, if you actually look at the life of the tribe along the river, at one time this was a salmon nation and people uh, you know, harvested salmon right from the river and its tributaries. But even to this day, uh, tribal members are eating salmon that come over uh, you know, from the Columbia side and are deeply involved in the life of the river. And I think um, uh, you know, inextricably connected to the life of the river. And I think the tribe is, is deeply involved with the river and will continue to be so uh, forever be the major player in the life of the river. Inland Northwest Native News. Like and subscribe. All right. That's what we're looking for. Thank you.